Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Oh, Jesus, 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 there's something about that name master savior jesus like the fragrance after the rain oh jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name kings and kingdoms Will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Praise Thank you, Jesus. How I love you. How I live. How my voice with your praise holy spirit holy spirit i implore thee i implore thee drench my heart drench my heart as my lips as my lips part your grace oh precious jesus Precious Jesus, how I love you, how I lift high my voice, how I lift high my voice with your praise, mm, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I implore thee. I implore thee, drench my heart, drench my heart, as my lips part your grave. Oh, I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. Oh, I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship me. Oh, I am, I am persuaded, 
you then Lord Lord to love you to love you I have I have been changed to bless your name oh, oh. I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee oh, forever I'm gonna worship I'm gonna worship thee oh yes I am forever to worship thee hallelujah praise the lord we are standing on holy ground for i know there are angels all around so let us Praise Jesus now For we are standing in his presence On holy ground Oh, we are standing On holy ground For I know that there are angels all around. Oh, let us praise, praise Jesus now. Oh, for we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Oh, we are standing, hallelujah, yes, Lord. on holy ground, this ground is holy, oh, and I know that there are angels, angels all around, let us praise him, let us praise Jesus now. Us now, oh Lord, for oh, we are standing in His presence yes, on holy, holy ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yeah. we are. We are standing in His presence on oh, holy ground. Yeah, yeah, holy yeah. ground. This ground is holy. We are standing yeah, yeah, yeah. in His presence. On holy ground. Praise Hallelujah. The Praise the Lord. We're just happy and glad to be here this morning. We ask that you all join in with us and let's have a good time in the name of the Lord. Praise God. We'll have a scripture and prayer and then we'll move right on into our devotion. Good morning. Our scripture reading will come from Psalms 100. It reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is, he is God, and it is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Uh, 
Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Father, we come again, oh Father, thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, O oh Father, for waking us up with a mind to come out to serve you this morning, O oh God. Bless, O oh Father, this service, O oh Father, that something be said or done, O oh Father, to encourage our hearts to go on in your name, O oh Father, to be men and women of God that you would have us to be. O oh God, we ask you to bless this service. Bless the man of God who is going to deliver your word this morning, O oh Father. And let it fall on good ground, O oh Father. Let our hearts be receptive to your word, O oh Father. And not just be hearers only, but be doers of your word, O oh Father. O oh God, touch our hearts and our minds, O oh Father. Forgive us, O oh Father, of our sins and our shortcomings, O oh God. Bless us to strive to be better, to go on and be better men of God, O oh Father. O oh God, we ask you to bless, O oh Father, each and every person that's in this sanctuary this morning. Bless those who are on their way, O oh Father. Keep them in your care, O oh Father, in Jesus' name. Bless, O oh Father, as the music goes forth, O oh Father, to encourage our hearts. Bless, for, bless as the preacher going, as the word goes forth, O oh Father, in Jesus' name. O oh God, we thank you and praise you for all that you already have done in our lives, O oh Father. Oh God, thank you and praise you, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord, everybody. If the Lord's been good to you, you ought to worship him. You ought to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. The psalm, the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, come on, somebody say at all times. When I'm feeling bad, I'm going to bless him. When I'm feeling sad, I'm going to bless him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When things are going wrong, I'm going to bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Song says, this morning when I wrote it, I didn't have no doubt. Oh, this morning when I wrote it, I didn't have no doubt. Oh, this morning when I wrote it, I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will take care. I know the Lord. I know the Lord lead and guide me all the way. Oh, this morning when I rode it. Oh, this morning when I rode it. Oh, this morning when I rode. I didn't have no, because I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord will lead and guide me. All the way. Oh, I woke up this morning, saw a brand new day. I didn't have. Oh, I woke up this morning, and saw a brand new day. Oh, I woke up this morning, and saw a brand new day. For oh, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord will lead and guide me all the way. Oh, said I woke up this morning with the Holy Ghost. I didn't have no. Oh, I woke up this morning with the Holy Ghost. I didn't have. Oh, church, I woke up this morning with the Holy Ghost. For I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord will lead me, guide me all the way. Oh. This morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Oh, this morning when I rode, yeah. Oh, this morning when I rode, yeah. Well, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. He'll lead, lead and guide me all the way. Oh, I felt like walking. Felt like walking. Felt like talking. I felt like talking. Felt like praying. I felt like praying. Felt like singing. I felt like singing. I felt like singing. Oh, I felt like singing. And I felt like shouting. 
I felt like shouting. I felt like shouting. Oh, I felt like shouting. Oh, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know He lead, lead me, guide me all the way. Oh, yes, He is. Oh, 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 all the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Praise God. We're going to turn, we thank everyone for participating, first of all, and then we'll turn it over to the hands of the pulpit. Come on, let's give God a praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many happy to be here? Say thank you, Jesus. For when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I felt like shouting. Hallelujah. I run around on my job. The goodness of God, how he has blessed us, how he's made a way for us, how he's opened doors for us, and hey, how he keeps on blessing us. When we close our eyes, and when we open our eyes, it should be, Lord, I thank you for how he's been blessing us. I'm really happy to be here. Hallelujah. I heard the song that says Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. God's word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. him for how good and how wonderful and how marvelous he has been oh, in our lives. Yeah. But look, we come in to worship. But when we need, we come, we need to praise and to share what we got from God. For the blessing of God is overwhelming. You know, he didn't just bless us, he blesses everybody. Somebody might need to have some kind of encouragement. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Somebody shout out to you. I'm so happy and fortified just to be in his presence. And where we should be, uh, it should be a part of us anyway. We should be able to praise God. Because he's everywhere, all at the same time. Yeah. He's all over the world. I thank God, in, even in this weather, God can wave his hand and bring about a change in our atmosphere. Do you understand that? He's doing it every day. And we're in his presence. And we should be able to say, Lord, I thank you.
I'm going to ask everybody to bow your heads in a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank and praise you for your goodness and for your mercy. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we pray that you will just move by your power. In the name of Jesus. Being sick among us, we pray, God, that you will touch and heal right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody came in with a burden. We pray that I will lift that burden right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is overwhelmed with financial difficulties. We pray that thou would, oh God, relieve that financial burden right now. In the name of Jesus. But whatever the problem is, God, we know you're able to do it. Because you're an awesome God. You're everywhere all at the same time. Bless our homes. Bless our families. Bless everybody. Pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Look down upon Second New St. Paul. Pray, oh God, that you will bless our pastor in the name of Jesus. God, we know you're everywhere all at the same time. Move by your power. Have your way. Somebody came in with a burden. Lift it right now. Somebody has a family problem. You can remove it right now. But whatever it is, we're all family. We all come together. Pray for one another. We love one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Have your way. Bless everybody here. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your way in our service. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Our responsive reading is found in Hebrews 11, 17 through 22. You have it, say amen. amen. <clears throat> By faith, Abraham, when he was tired, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his stair. Altogether, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Amen. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Oh, I say yes, Lord. I'm completely, yes. Completely, yes. Oh, my soul. My soul. Say yes. Oh, let me say it one more time. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom to the depths of my soul. Oh, 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 oh. I'm saying yes, Lord. I surrender my all completely. My, my, my soul. My soul say yeah. Oh, because I love you. I love you. I love you. Lord, I love you. 
I love you from the bottom, from the bottom up to the depths of my soul. Oh, I really, really love you. Yes, I love you. I love you, Lord. I really do. Oh, my soul. My soul said, yeah. Now listen. Not my will, but thine will be done. No more I. But the Christ that lives within. Lord, I give my everything. My everything to you. And I'm yielding completely. Yielding completely through. Oh, oh, oh yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, I wish somebody would help me say yes, Lord. Come on, raise your hands and say from the bottom. To the depths of my soul. Oh, 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 I'm telling you, yes. No matter what's going on, I'll take a plea. Yeah. Church my soul. My soul says, yeah. Let me say that one more time. It's not my will. But thine will be done. No more I, but the Christ that lives within. Lord, I give my everything, my everything to you. And I'm yielding completely. I'm yielding completely through. I'm going to tell you yes, Lord. Oh, 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 I'm willing to say yes. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Oh, 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 I'm saying yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. Oh, my soul, my soul. My soul say yes. Yeah. Come on, say it one more time. That sounds good. Say yes, Lord. Oh, come on, let me hear you sing it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, that's it. From the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the dead. Oh, I'll say yes, Lord. I promise and I'll say it completely. Yes. Oh, my soul. My soul says yes. My soul says yes, yes, yes. Oh, 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 yes, Lord. My soul says yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna tell him yes. I'm gonna tell him yes, yes, Lord. My soul says yes, yes, yes. My soul said yes, 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 in the good times and bad times, yes, 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 oh yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord.
glad to see everybody out here today and see some people haven't seen for a while and I say thank you Jesus thank you Lord my little girlfriend right here <laughs> sister sister Marilyn Johnson's granddaughter yes so it's a very integral part of the junior church we are all glad to be here to the pulpit this morning we're glad to be in the name, be here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're glad to be in the service one more time. Because he didn't have to let us live to be in his service one more time. praise God again <laughs> because you know because we got brother minister Byron Stewart then we got Reverend Bryant Stewart and little did we know when little Byron used to follow Reverend Bryant around that he would end up preaching to us we praise God for that today because, you know, God can do anything and there is no failure in God. I'm happy today. I'm just really, really happy. I'm, I'm excited, too. I'm going to do the announcement. Sister Lisa is not here today because she is celebrating her 48th wedding anniversary today. So um, I'm here with her. And of course, today we're going to have Minister Byron Stewart is going from the Father's House in Oakland, California, is going to be our speaker for today. And we ask that if you have any love offering that you want to give to the minister, there will be somebody here with a basket and you can put your donation in that basket. The 2024 Women's Day Drive is in session through September the 22nd. The adult assessment is 250, and the teams are posted in the vestibule. Complete or partial payments may be submitted during the offering period each Sunday, or you may mail your assessment to the church office. Deaconess Tracy Stewart is the chairperson. On Sunday, August the 18th, we will have the Brotherhood Hood Ministry Annual Day, and our own Reverend Robert Sturdivant will deliver the morning message. And the same thing, the love offering addressed to Reverend Sturdivant may be presented during the offering period along with the ministry roll call. Brother Ronnie Winfield is the president. The Youth Fellowship Ministry will be in recess. On Sunday, August the 25th, Reverend Odessa Jackson will deliver the morning message. And the love offers, addre offerings addressed to Reverend Jackson may be presented during the offering period. On the first Sunday in September, which is September the 1st, will be our Holy Communion, and we ask that all will come out and participate. I just want to say one thing here today. On Wednesday evening, every Wednesday at the 7.30 hour, the prayer meeting is online. Now, it really, really, really upsets me that we have people in this church that don't care about praying for each other. And that's the time that you need to be on that line. Uh, Reverend Jackson has a Tuesday prayer meeting, and if you're working and you can't get on the line on Tuesday, you can surely get on there on Wednesday because we're living in some terrible times now, and prayer is going to be the only answer. Now, we can say whatever we want to say. I don't have time. I forgot it. But God does not forget us, and I'm happy about that. So I've admonished you all to be on the prayer line on Wednesday. The, the, the passcode and telephone is in this bulletin. 
I think it's on the, behind, on the second page or the first page, but it's in there. So please, we want to see, we want to hear you either on Tuesday or on Wednesday night. I pray, I pray that you will take this to heart because this is, this is serious business, really serious business. We want to uh, say that we are glad to see Sister Benjamin out here and we're glad that Reverend Benjamin is getting a rest that he, it's, uh, that he really, really needs because we know he has not been well, but he presses his way every Sunday to come out here and preach the word of God to us because he knows that that's what the Lord has told him to do. And uh, we're glad to have him go on vacation. I will now read the guidelines for attending church. To all who attend Sunday school and worship service, we encourage you to be vaccinated. Until further notice, the Franklin Street door will be the only entrance and exit, and all services will remain streamlined and modified. Unless otherwise indicated, the wearing of face masks is optional. Upon entry, each and every person must have their temperature checked. If your temperature is 100.4 or higher, entrance will be denied. Hand sanitizer and face masks are available. Once inside the church, members and guests are not to venture beyond the main vestibule, first floor restrooms and sanctuary. The crystal room, cafeteria, kitchen, and education center will be off limits to everyone. No one is allowed upstairs except for the trustees. Sunday school class will begin promptly at 9.15 in the sanctuary and will end at 10.15. This will be the only class available in the church. We recommend you arrive by 9 o'clock. Any personal communication with Pastor Benjamin must be done by a written note or you may call him during the week and his number is in the bulletin. Devotion will begin promptly at 10.20. Service will begin at 10.30. We recommend you arrive by 10 o'clock. There will be one offering and ushers will not pass around offering baskets. For your convenience, offering envelopes have been placed behind each pew. Offerings must be placed in an offering envelope. We ask that you complete the envelope with your name, date, designated offering, and amounts. If you need to use more than one envelope, you may do so. Members and guests will process to the tithe box where they may deposit their offerings. Missionary offerings are to be placed in the offering basket held by a trustee. During altar call, members and guests are to stand, remain in their pew, and pray. The covenant reading at the Holy Communion will be omitted. Members and guests may process to the communion table to pick up their communion cup. Used communion cups are to be placed in cup holders behind the pews. At the end of the service, everyone must exit the sanctuary. We ask that you read your bulletin, take them home, and refresh whatever it is you did not remember that I said to you today. May the Lord continue to bless you. Amen. Come on, raise your hand if you really love the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, whisper to your neighbor and say, I really love the Lord. Come on, tell somebody, I really love the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to feel his presence every day. I want to feel his presence every day. Little song says, This is the air I breathe. <laughs> this is the air I breathe your holy presence living in me this is my daily bread This is my daily bread. Your very 
every word spoken to me hallelujah this is the air I breathe I want to breathe his spirit this is the air I breathe your holy presence living in me this is my daily bread this is my daily bread Your very word, your word, spoken, spoken to me. Oh, and I, I, I am desperate, I'm desperate for you. Anybody desperate out there this morning? Don't you want to feel his presence? Oh, and I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm lost. I'm lost without you, Lord. Without you, Lord. Without you, Lord. Oh, and I, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, and I. I'm so, I'm so desperate for you. I want to feel your presence all around me. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I, oh Lord, I'm so lost. I'm so lost without you. I'm so lost without you. I need you. I need you. I need you, Lord, and I'm, that's why I'm, oh, I'm, I'm so, I'm so desperate for you, Lord. I need you every second, every minute, every hour, every day, oh, and I'm, oh, Lord, oh, yes, I am, oh, Lord, I'm lost without you. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yes, I am. Ooh. This is the air I breathe. Lord, you are the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's worship this morning. Oh, come on, worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, come on, you know he's been good to you. Oh, stop trying to play hard to get. You know he's been good. Yeah. You know he's been good. Praise him. <laughs> you know he's been good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the air I breathe. You know, when I fall on my knees, I say, Lord, without you, I cease to exist. 
God should be everything to us. He should be the air that we breathe. He should be the thing that we think about when we wake up in the morning and the last thing when we lay down to go to sleep. We cease to exist without him. Because everybody's not going to care about you like you want them to care about you. But God cares about you all the time. When folks turn their backs on you, when folks look down on you, God got a way of lifting you up and making you look good. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to give God the praise. Why do we come to church? Why do we praise him? Because we praise him for all he done for us. Didn't he woke you up this morning? Didn't he allow you to open up your eyes and everything was still intact? No thieves broke in last night. No fire broke out. And guess what? He woke you up at the appointed time. Sometimes we think we've done this on our own. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, come on somebody. Somebody need to give him the praise. I thank you, Dr. Payton, for reminding us that he is the air that we breathe. That's a beautiful song. That's a pretty song. Because it reminds all of us that if it was not for him on our side, you know, you can look back. I was in the office with Stuart. And I remember when I came here, my daughter was a baby, Stephanie. She 27 years old. And I look back with a mere uh, misses and accidents. I remember when she was in a high chair and we was talking and there was concrete there. And her chair fell over. And if it wasn't for the table that was in front, you know, them high chairs, they had a little table to it. It protected her from hitting her brain. But I begin to thank God because if it wasn't for God, it would have been a different story. When my son, five years old, fell out the car on his head because he was following his, his sisters trying to come in the house when we was moving, his foot got hung up on the edge of the window and he fell on his head. And they had to rush him to um, um, Children's Hospital. And they said, Mr. Sturdivant, if his heart does not start beating like the normal uh, heart rate of his age, we don't think he's going to make it. And I grabbed his hand. I said, Lord, you gave him to me. Now you bring him back. Early that morning, that five-year-old son and me were skipping out of the children's hospital. You can't tell me what God cannot do. Now that boy is 25 years old and bigger than me. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to give God the praise. And I know all of us got stories like that. That God had brought us to. So Dr. Payton, keep on reminding us that he is the air that we breathe. I'm happy now. I'm ready to turn it over to Brian. Let him go and preach the gospel. But we got to do protocol. And we thank God for him. Now, second, St. Paul. How many of y'all are excited? And I'm not talking about what's going on in the, in the church. How many of you are excited what's going on on the outside? We're going to have the first woman to be the president of the United States. Then not only that, she's African American. Somebody need to give God the praise. And I mean, I, it, it, it's just like Obama, the excitement. You see it all over the place. Her rallies. She had a rally in uh, Arizona. 15,000 people. Come on, somebody. Las Vegas, 15,000 people. Come on, somebody. And the only thing he can do is criticize. Talking about he had a rally bigger than Martin Luther King. You lost your mind. Talking about helicopters and shocks and uh, cannibal lector and all this stuff. Come on, somebody. Who's caught in now? He can't get on Joe Biden no more. Right. Joe Biden is a patriot. Yeah. He stepped aside. Yeah. You need to step aside, but you ain't trying to do that. Right. I had to put that little Trump out there, compassion, talk about it every time he get up in his pulpit. We need to be reminded 
we got to get out there and vote. We got to get people resting. We got to make sure everybody vote. And she turning this thing upside down. And when you see her speak, she commands the president. She has some heckers over there. She said, you go ahead and vote for Donald Trump. Come on, somebody. She controlled that thing, didn't she? And you black women, y'all should be excited. The black men had the opportunity to be excited when Obama got in there for eight years. Everybody should be excited. And look how God works. Look how God works. Joe Biden was vice president for a black man for eight years. And then when he became the president, he, he selected a black woman. Now she is the head of the nominated um, um, nominated DC uh, 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 Democrats. Come on, somebody, she's the head. Let me go. On. I'm getting excited now. I'm getting excited. I can run on, baby. I got to get excited because I'm so high. Every time I hear that man speak, it makes me cringe. But I thank God. God is still in charge. Let us prepare ourselves for our tithes and offering. We ask that you would keep our pastor in prayer. Uh, uh, like um, they say that pastor, like Sister McCall said, he, he's always here every Sunday. And he gives us the word. And we need to continue to pray that God will continue to lift him up. We're going to have our trustees to take charge as we lift up our tithes and offering. We ask that you will put your uh, money in the envelope for the preacher of the hour. He's one of ours. He's a product of Second New St. Paul Baptist Church. And we should be excited. We should be on fire. And we should be thanking God. So we ask that you will prepare yourself when we know that God loves a cheerful giver. And we ask that you will be cheerful in your giving. At this time, we ask that the ushers and the trustees will take over at this time.
Let us stand for our offertory prayer. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Before we go on, I want to invite um, Sister Parker to come because she has some vital information to tell us about what's happening during this election time, and we need to hear what she has to say. Good morning, and thank you for the pulpit. Uh, I'm your social activist. I know I'm kind of quiet in the church, but I do try to give information as much as possible. If you read the uh, Sunday School Chronicle, there was an article that I had written that they placed in there. Well, what I want to tell you this morning, yes, everybody need to be registered to vote. But there's a key thing, and I ask you to contact your family all through the South. There's an effort. They're purging your voting eligibility. You won't know it until you show up to vote. So I encourage you, November is the election for general election. But 30 days before, in some states, in some states two weeks before, you need to check or have your family to check. They have not been purged from the voting registration. It's critical, especially for us as black people. The other item is, have those in the South double check to find out where the voting polls are going to be right. because they're changing them as well. Yes, they Again, are. it's to keep us from being able to vote for the President of the United States. States of America. This is key. Don't play with it. This is key. God bless and thank you. Amen, amen. And we got to understand how serious that is then not only that, they setting up people in places that if he lose, they going to try to steal this. I'm sure they, they, they even setting them up in Georgia. And Georgia's just passed a law. I forgot what it is, but you need to make sure you keep in yourself informed of what's going on. Because if, if she win this election... They got people set up in places where they're not going to certify. And we need to be, we need to let our voices be heard. Because like she said, the people is the power. We the one that makes this nation. Not them. And then not only that, they are elected to serve us. Not us to serve them. So we need to keep our eyes and keep focus on what we need. And this is serious. This is a serious thing. Because they're not going to try. They don't want to elect that black woman in that office. And I hate to say it like that. But that is the truth. We still live in a country that's still racist. And what I'm upset about is how black men are falling for them talking points. We should be standing for her. And we should be outraged in the way he talks about her. She's a very intelligent woman. She's more intelligent. She got more intelligent in her baby finger than he got in his whole body. Come on, somebody. And he gets on TV and berates and belittle her. That upsets me. And then you got black men who fall in the suit. It's time for us to stand, black men. And I ain't going to apologize for saying that. Because it's the truth. Let us prepare ourselves for what we all need to do. And that is to pray. Sweet she said something in an election. She said, joy warriors. But we got prayer warriors. Sweet and prayer warriors is what's going to get her over. 
So we need to pray, y'all. We need to pray more than we ever prayed before. We prayed when Obama ran. Now let's pray for hers. So let us prepare ourselves all around this place. Stand for our altar prayer. Pray for our pastor. Pray for the Dixon family. I want to say to Cleo, thank God for the people who went and visited and supported the family. Cleo, my love is with you and my prayer is with you. He was a good man. He was a talented musician. And we thank God for him. And, we, and not only that, he was one of ours. She's known. So we thank God for that. In At this time, we're going to have prayer with Brian, Reverend Brian Stewart, the big brother of the preacher who's coming to preach. I told him in the office, he's a proud big brother. Look at him. <laughs> Let us pray. My soul. Often found relief and all escape the ten the snare by the return sweet I a prayer. Let us pray. Pray, Brian. Our Father and our God. Yes, yes. Lord, as we come now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, if we've ever needed you before. We need you now, Lord. We need you now. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, if we've ever needed to have our spirits calm. Pray, Brian. Pray. We've never needed to feel your touch. Yes. Lord, if we've ever needed to know that you're still God and God alone. Yes, yes. Lord, we need to know it right now. Right now, Lord. Lord, if we've ever needed healing, we've ever needed deliverance. We've ever needed our hearts fixed and our minds regulated. Yes, yes. Lord, we need it right now. Yeah. But Lord, we come calling on your name right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Because Lord, we know that you're able. Yes. Lord, you're the God that's done it before. And you're the God that sure enough can do it again. But Lord, before we even utter anything right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just come to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we lift up our hands today. We open up our mouths. And Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you. Right now, Lord, in the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, if we had hundreds of thousands of tongues, Lord, we couldn't praise you enough. But such as we have. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your healing power. Yes, yes. Thank you for your saving power. power. Yes. Thank you for your unconditional love. Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you. For saving our souls. Thank you for making us whole. Thank you for the power of the blood. The blood that gives us strength from day to day. The blood that will never lose its power. Yes, yes. Lord, we say thank you now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for just another day's journey. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning in our right minds. Thank you. Yes, yes. For a portion yes. of health and strength. Lord, we just say thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Realizing, Lord, that it's not about us. Yes. Lord, it says that your grace and your mercy, mercy. continue to reign supreme over our lives, Lord. So we just say thank you now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Jesus today. Yes, yes. To yes. know that there's still power in his name. Man. Power to heal the saved, the unsaved, the power to heal the lost. Yes, yes, yes. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you. But now, Lord, as we come, Lord, we say have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord, right now yes, in the name right of Jesus. Now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch us one by one, name by name. name. Cleanse us. Yes, Lord. From all unrighteousness, have mercy upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we would be a vessel that can be used by you to serve you and to glorify yes, your name. Yes, yes. Now, Lord, as we come gathered around this altar, 
Lord, you know all about us because you made us. Yes. And Lord, you know the petitions that we're going to ask even before we open our mouths. Yes, yes. So Lord, we, we know today that it's already done in the name of Jesus. Whatever troubles us, whatever worries us, whatever concerns we might have, Lord, we know that it's already done. Yes, yes, yes. In the mighty name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. So Lord, we put sickness in your hands today yes yes we put whatever trouble whatever worry we might have in our homes in our jobs in our personal lives in your hands yes lord we say lord make it well make it well lord make it right yes lord we put these united states of america in your hands yes, right now lord. yes 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 lord, lord we know your will is already done yes lord and so lord we're claiming victory right now lord right in the now, name lord. of jesus in the name of jesus Lord, just give us the patience to hold on. Have your way, Lord. And to hold out just a little while longer. Yes. Lord, continue to bless this branch of Zion. Yes, Lord. Touch the second who St. Paul Baptist Church has stood on this corner for 101 years. Yes, yes. Lord, continue to let the light shine. Yes. Continue to let others come in this place and know that this is a place where they can see God in its fullest. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, continue to bless our pastor. Bless him, Lord. Continue to bless our first lady, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Give them the strength that they need, Lord, yes, so that they yes. might continue yes. to do your will. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Bless our young people. Bless them, Lord. Bless the sick, the bereaved. Yes. Bless the unsaved right now, Lord. Yes. In the mighty name, name of, of, Jesus. of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, now as we prepare to hear from you, Bless this man of God that you yes, sent this yes, way all the way from yes. California. Yes, Lord. Touch him as only you know how, Lord, yes, in the yes. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anoint him with your spirit today, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Let him stand on your word and preach it with boldness. Yes, yes. Power yes. and conviction. Yes, yes. Give him a word for the house, Lord. Yes, Lord. That not only will we be touched by the hearing of your word, but, Lord, that we would run out and want to tell others. Yes. About the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless him now, Lord. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, when we leave from this place, we'll leave out of here today much better than the way that we came Amen. in. Yes. But most importantly, Lord, knowing that we put it all in your hands. And that it is well. It is well. Within our souls. souls. Lord, we say thank you now. Thank you, Lord. And most importantly, Father God, we say that we love you now. Yes, Lord. And we say that victory is ours in the mighty name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. And that we shall not be defeated. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all of God's children. Say amen. 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 And amen. amen. God bless you. We want to thank Reverend. Brian stood for that firm in prayer. I'm going to turn it over after we get a selection from Dr. Payton in the hands of Reverend Brian Stewart as he introduced his younger brother. When I was in the study, I started thinking back and started thinking about Pastor Wim and Deacon Stewart. They looking down and looking at this young man and they got joy in their heart. You know, it's something when we raise our children in church and a lot of times when they get old, they go their separate ways. But this young man following the footsteps of his older brother and we thank God for Brian Stewart because he's an example to his brothers. And we thank God not only he's an example to his brothers, but he's an example to all his ministers. When I look at him and, and hear him preach, I am amazed that I'm a part of that group. You know, at the conference, Lionel started a thing calling us homeboys. And when we see each other, Freddie Davis, Briggs, myself, uh, Thorpe, and all of us, we begin to call each other homeboys. And I told Brian, he's part of the group, he's homeboy. I told Chase, he's a homeboy. 
Now I'm telling young, Brian, young Byron, he's a homeboy. Come on, somebody. He's a part of the family. And we all owe it to Pastor Wim. He produced us and he let us go. And this young man is coming back from California. Murray had two children. He was in the office on the phone with his children. Come on, somebody. Look what God can do when we keep our children in prayer. And I look at Sister Benjamin, a proud mother. You should have saw her coming down the street. She was stepping high. She was coming to hear her son preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. She had one who's a preacher. Now she got two who's going to be a preacher. She just got to wait on the last one. And I call them the three B's. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to give God the praise. So I have a song from our own Dr. Payton. Come on, somebody. You heard that, Dr. Payton. You got to sing. After that selection, we're going to have Reverend Brian Stewart to come and introduce his younger brother. Deliver out of darkness. Into the kingdom of his son forgiving of my sin forgiving of my sin and redeemed through his blood and redeemed through his blood oh yeah oh yeah cause I've got I've got so many reasons so many reasons so many reasons oh, to rejoice. Can I say that one more time? Deliver out of darkness. Deliver out of darkness. Mm. Into the kingdom of his son. Into the kingdom of his son. Can I get a witness out there? Yeah, I see my choir back there. Oh, oh forgiving. Forgiving up my sin. Huh. And redeemed through the blood. And redeemed through the blood. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've got I've got so many reasons. So many reasons. So many reasons. Oh, oh, oh to rejoice. Yes, I do. Now here's my testimony. He woke me up this morning. Uh, yes, he did. And not only that, then he started me on my way. Mm. Oh, Lord. And you know what else he did? He gave me health and strength. Yes, he did. And that, not only that, he let me see, see another day. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. Because I've got, I've got so many reasons. Uh, many reasons. So many reasons to rejoice. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, I'm going to rejoice. Church, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. Because I've got, I've got so many reasons. So many reasons. So many reasons to, to rejoice. See, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Yes, I am. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. I'm not going to let the devil 
Check me, rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice. Cause I've got, I've got so many reasons. So many reasons. So many reasons. I've got, I've got so many reasons. So many reasons. He won't be up this morning. Started me on my way. I've got so many reasons. So many reasons. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I've got so many, many reasons to, to. I'm going to rejoice. You ought to rejoice <laughs> because he's been good. He's been good. He's been better than good. I'm going to rejoice. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise in the building. Hallelujah. So many reasons. So many reasons. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. <laughs> so many reasons. <laughs> Didn't have to be this way. So many reasons. Two. 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 I'm going to reach all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Y'all ought to act like you love him up in here. <laughs> Y'all ought to act like he's done something for you. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house to know that the Lord is good and that he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord is sure enough worthy to be praised. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He's kept me from all evil. And my mind stayed on him. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made and we have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. I'm not going to hold you long because I just have one thing to do and I think this uh, is a joyous task, uh, which is to introduce uh, my baby brother. Amen, amen. I'm so uh, very proud of him. And I, I, I have to tell this, this story, Deacon Bland, and I think you and I can, uh, can relate to this. Uh, when I first uh, started preaching here at Second New St. Paul well over 30 years ago, I'm still a young man, though, still a young man. Uh, uh, the Sundays that I would preach, uh, Deacon Randolph, uh, God bless him, would, would give me, uh, y'all young people don't know about this, he'd give me a little cassette tape. Uh, you, you know, remember the 90 minute tapes, 45 on one and 45 on the other. Uh, and, I, and I had my little tape and I, you know, at some point in time I would go back and, and listen to it. But uh, there was a tape thief uh, in, in my house. Uh, and, 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 and my brother uh, would take my tape. <laughs> and I remember the cassette player was on the floor. And he'd sit there and listen to my sermons. And not only would he listen to my sermons, but, but then he would preach it. Back to me. So, so I've known for a long time uh, that this young man has had a mark on him. He's had a calling on his, his life. And I'm so very proud that he has answered the call 
Uh, we know that uh, Second New St. Paul is, is a fertile ground. There are a lot of people that have come through this church and have gone on to do great things. Uh, amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. So when you, when you say, the same, say the name Second New St. Paul, that's just something we all should be proud of. Amen. Something we all should be proud of. They carry the name of Second New St. Paul Baptist Church. And just let me uh, make the record clear. We were a mega church before the term even existed. <laughs> we were years ahead of our time. So, so when we, people talk about mega churches, uh, the blueprint started right here on 24th and Franklin. Amen, somebody. And so my brother is now continuing in that legacy of preachers to come out of the second new St. Paul Baptist Church. He is from the Father's House Church in Oakland, California. We ask that you all would pray much for him and pray much with him. In the words of the famous song, he's not heavy. He's my brother. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you so much, Lord, for this day. God, we thank you for another opportunity to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. Father, we ask that you would just search this congregation right now. Where there's a need, God, we ask that you would meet it. Lord, I ask that you would just hide me behind you. Let them see none of me, oh God, in all of you. And let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tell me what would it be like, my God, when all of God's children we come together and we're gonna enjoy a one another and we're gonna lay down our lives for the Lord. And we're going to lay down our lives for the Lord. Now tell me what would it be like, oh my God. Now tell me what would it be like, my God, when all of God's children, we come together and we're going to enjoy one another and we're going to our lives for the Lord and we're gonna lay down our life for the Lord one more time I need more out of this section tell me what would it be like my God now tell me what would it be right here now tell me what would it be when all of God's children we come together and we're gonna enjoy I wanna hear like another and we're gonna our lives for the Lord and we're gonna lay down our lives for the Lord Amen when I get nervous, I start singing. So I said, let me go ahead and get those nerves out. Let me get them all out. It was either that or future. And I was like, the older people might not know who future is. The younger people know who future is. 
Uh, but first, giving it to God, I'm just so happy and thrilled to be back home. Uh, to Pastor Benjamin and his absence, uh, to the official board, uh, to this fantastic ministerial staff, to the musicians, to the first lady, my mother, uh, just grateful for this opportunity to be here. And I'm just so thankful uh, that you all allowed me to come back to give a word this morning. Uh, I do want to give shout out to my wife who's holding it down back in California with our two kids, Bo and Sage. I believe she's streaming right now or she's headed to church, but either way, I love you, babe. I will be back later tonight. Uh, hope the kids have a good day. <laughs> but she's been holding it down since Wednesday of this week, so I have uh, a spa and some other stuff in place when I get back for her uh, to get some rest. So. Uh, thank you for that. But it's so good to be back home. Uh, it's an exciting time we're in. We've already talked about the elections, and uh, I've been paying attention to the Olympics. Anyone else been watching the Olympics? They're watching Shikari, and I've been watching Simone Bowles, who's been absolutely amazing. Uh, and yesterday, I was actually with Pastor Benjamin. We were watching the, uh, the basketball game, and I'm just so amazed because LeBron James and I are exactly the same age, and I can't do half the stuff that LeBron James does. <laughs> So it's so exciting to see him. And so I don't know if you all know this or not, but his son, Bronny James, just recently got drafted by the Lakers. And so this fall, they're supposed to be playing together on the same team for the Lakers. Uh, now, a whole lot of controversy has come out around whether or not he deserves to be on the team. So this past year, he was at USC, University of S Southern California. And when they looked at his stats, when they looked at his ability on the court, they said if this was any other player, he probably wouldn't get drafted. They said he wasn't good enough. They said that he shouldn't have been drafted. They say the only reason why he got drafted was because his father is LeBron James. And I was one of those people. I was like, I've seen him in person, being in California. I said, no, I don't know if he's good enough. I don't know if he has the talent or the ability. And maybe it is some type of nepotism where the fact that his father's LeBron James is why he got that opportunity. Then as a Christian, y'all see where I'm going. There were some things that we might not have been good at. There have been some opportunities that we received because of who our father is. And so when I start to take inventory over the jobs I've had, over the health that I've had, I have to say that it wasn't anything that I did because I wasn't good enough. But it was all because of who my father is. All because of who he is. And so I'm just so thankful for God just filling in the gaps and adding favor to not only my life, but everyone's life that's here. Um, so regardless of what you're going through, God is still a faithful God. He's still doing works for each and every one of us. All right. All right. That was a warm up. I wanted to test like where the shouts are. I did not see Reggie today. And I was hoping I saw Reggie because I know Reggie would get excited regardless of what I said. I could come up here and sneeze and Reggie will be running out the back door. I, I needed to see him. And so when I didn't see him, I got nervous. But, but can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all be Reggie today? Can y'all be a little Reggie today? I need some. Do I have some Reggies over here? Just raise your hand. I got some. Okay. Do I have some Reggies over here? Do I have any Reggies over here? Okay. And I know I got a couple Reggies in the pulpit back here. Can you imagine Reggie when he watched the live stream today? He can be like, yeah, he's going to be like, they're talking about me today. But anyway, wherever Reggie is, God bless Reggie. But we have some, some Reggies that are going to fill in today. All right. So I do have a word this morning. And my job is one of many things today. I do want to uh, get us out of here at a really good hour so y'all can get home. And I know some of y'all have greens and beans on the stove and turkeys in the oven and all that, so I want to make sure you all get home. Sweet potatoes, all that stuff. Make sure you get home in a decent hour. Uh, but if you have your Bible with me, I think they'll put it up on the screen. Um, I don't like to say it's a very familiar text because there's some people that might get offended if they've never heard of it before. So I won't say it's a familiar text, but I feel like many of you all here have either heard this message preach or are familiar with the text that we have uh, this morning. So we are coming from the gospel according to John chapter 11. Now, I thought about reading 1 through 32. I said, that's a whole lot. But I'm going to go hop and skip around if that's okay with everyone. All right. So we're in John chapter 11. We're going to start with verses 1 through 6. I'm going to probably hop down to verses 17 through 20. And then I'll close out with 28 through 32. That way we can get most of what we're talking about here. 
If you need more time, say more time. If you're good, say amen. amen. All right. John chapter 11, verse 1 through 6. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary. Somebody turn to your name and say, it was that Mary. Oh, y'all can do better now. Give me a little bit more. I came from a Pentecostal church. It was that Mary. There you go. That's okay. Which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, he was sick, he abode or he stayed two days still in the same place where he was. I'm going to skip down to verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave, this is Lazarus, four days already. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, which is about two miles. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Verse 28 through 32. And when she, this is Martha, had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she, this is Mary, heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now that Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him, the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Verse 32, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, She fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. If I wanted to hang my hat on a particular verse that's going to be around our subject matter for this morning, I want to go back to verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary... Say, but Mary sat still in the house. For a few moments that are ours this morning, I'd like to preach from the subject of there's something about Mary. There's something about Mary. If you were to ask me my greatest accomplishment in the 40 years that I've been living on earth, my wife and I would have to agree that it has to be being parents to two amazing young men. And being their dad and even my wife being their mother, because of the relationship that we have with our children, there are some things that we know about them and can pick up about them without them even communicating it to us. So when we have our children play in our house upstairs or downstairs, we can almost anticipate a disagreement or we can almost anticipate tension with them based upon the situation they find themselves in. Even when they were younger, I remember a particular instance, even when they were younger, when they couldn't speak, there were instances where our children would cry and we would know exactly what the cry was based upon how the cry sounded. I'm preaching, let's warm up here. And so I could tell because I have a relationship with my children that when I hear the cry, I can tell if it was a diaper change cry I can tell if it was I need a bottle cry and I can tell if they were pain if they were in pain or if they were suffering so this particular night I'm sleep at night and my wife and I are asleep and we hear our youngest son Sage begin to cry and so based upon my relationship with our children I knew instantly by the sound that it was a change of diaper cry so I get up and I make my way to Sage's room to change his diaper and I realized that the diapers were downstairs so he's crying and I'm making my way to his room and all of a sudden I said you know what I got a detour and go downstairs 
and get these diapers in preparation to change my son. So I go downstairs. I get the diapers. I notice that there are wipes downstairs as well, so I get the wipes. And then I turn around and I notice that there's some diaper cream there as well. So I grab all these items and head back upstairs in preparation to change my son. So I enter the room where my son is crying and as soon as I open the door and turn the light off, turn the light on, his crime begins to stop. Now in my head, I'm like, daddy came and he saved the day. You should be excited. But, but it amazed me because he wasn't excited to see me. In fact, he looked a little disappointed at the fact that I had arrived. And so what happens for the next five minutes is I begin to change his diaper, but he starts kicking and crying and fussing because he didn't want me to change him. And so after about five minutes, I'm able to change his diaper, calm him down, and go back and put him back to sleep. Now at this point, my wife is wondering what has been going on over the last five to seven minutes. As you can imagine, she's a black woman. She's like, I don't know what's going on, but I need to get to the bottom of what's going on. And so I walk back into the room and I talk to my wife and I tell her everything that happened. Sage cried. I recognized that it was a diaper change cry. I had to go to his room, but I had to detour, head downstairs and get all of those items to change his diaper. Y'all with me? All right. So I, so I tell her all this stuff and I said, but as soon as I got to the room to change him, he was actually frustrated. He was absolutely upset and were just to me changing him. And so she said to me, well, typically when I change him, I usually give him a bottle. And when he has the bottle, he sips the bottle, he calms down, and then I'm able to change him. After we have conversations about this and we talk a little bit more, my wife goes back to sleep. But let me tell you something, church. For the next 15 minutes or so, daddy could not go back to sleep. I was thinking about everything that had transpired to try to get a better understanding of what's happening. And so I, I sit there and I start thinking and I start examining things because for me, my son cried out, I arrived, but he resisted the very thing that he called me to do. Okay, let me come back to this side over here. My, my son cried out, and, 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 and I arrived with the necessary items to change him. Ooh, I feel the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so he cries out, I arrive, and I begin to change him, but he then starts to resist me. And so I wonder, why would my son resist the very thing he called me to do? And so I start to realize that when my son is crying out to me, point number one, he can't see me. So he only recognizes my delay and not my preparation. He can't see that I've gone downstairs to get the necessary items to change him. He can only recognize that there was a cry and then there was a delay from the time that he cried to the time that I arrived to change him. The second thing that I noticed is that my wife said that, that, that when she changes him, she gives him a what? A bottle. Now daddy didn't know that. That, daddy messed up. But then I started to think that there was an unmet expectation because when he's changed, he's expecting a bottle and daddy didn't have a bottle. So again, my son cried out. Daddy comes to change him. I arrive to change him. He realizes that there's a delay. Somebody say delay. And there's an unmet expectation. Somebody said unmet expectation because I didn't bring what he was used to receiving. So even though I came to change him, it wasn't in the manner in which he wanted. It wasn't like how mommy did it. But despite me being able to change him, it wasn't packaged in a manner that he liked. Talking about delays, somebody say delays. And unmet expectations. And I think we can all relate when it comes to dealing with delays and unmet expectations as it relates to our walk with Jesus. So we've been calling out to God and helping every aspect of our lives. And it seems that God has not answered us. And there seems to be a delay. 
And for some of us, when we see the blessing, we do not have a disposition of gratefulness or thanksgiving, but one like my son where there's confusion and disappointment because the blessing did not align to our expectation. And so this issue that I find as Christians because we believe in the presence of God, we believe in the power of God, and, and we only have a problem because we question the timing of God. And so we also believe sometimes that we know better than God. So again, it's not that we don't believe in the presence of God. It's not that we don't believe in the power of God, but we question God's timing in our lives. And when there is a disconnect between what we believe and what we bear, we begin to lose faith in God all because we encounter delays and unmet expectations. But as we look in the text this morning, we see two women who happen to deal with some delays and unmet expectations. The sisters of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, sent a message to Jesus explaining that their brother was deathly ill. When Jesus heard it, he said that this illness would not end in death, but in glory for God and his son. He stayed where he was another two days. Say delay. Mm. He stayed where he was for another two days. Say delay. And when Jesus arrives in Bethany to find that Lazarus has already died, that was an unmet expectation. So when Martha and Mary separately meet with Jesus, they both respond to Jesus saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Martha and Mary both experiences delay, say delay, and unmet expectation. Now, 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 typically, when we hear this sermon, when we hear this preach, typically, the focus is on Lazarus. Amen? And so, my title does not have anything to do with Lazarus. But I came all the way to California because some of y'all, when y'all read the scripture, said, I, I need a shout about Lazarus. So in an effort to do that, move it out the way, and then focus on the title, I'm going to give you a shout on Lazarus now. Is that all right? You don't got to get on the piano yet, but I'm A flat or B if you decide to work it out. Here's your Lazarus shout. I'm going to start over here, Reggie's. Reggie 1, Reggie 2, Reggie 3. Here's your shout. So that way when you go home tonight and get on the phone, I got my Lazarus shout. Here you go. Lazarus was sick. Lazarus died. And Lazarus was raised. Deacon Blannon, get your section together, okay? I'm going to come here. Sister McCall, I got high expectations right now, okay? Here's your Lazarus shout. Lazarus was sick. Lazarus was died. And Lazarus was raised. That's a little, okay. All right. I got some of my volunteer choir members back there. They're going to look out for me. Okay. My third Sunday crew. All right. I believe in y'all. Sister Borns, I got you. Y'all ready for your Lazarus shout? Lazarus was sick. Lazarus died. And Lazarus was raised. And I need y'all to really think about that because whatever you are dealing with, I don't care if you got a wayward child. I don't care if your marriage is on the rocks. I don't even care what the doctor has said. We still serve a same God that can take somebody that was sick, somebody that died, and still raise them up. Whose report do you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. And sometimes for us, you don't need a miracle. No, 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 no. You, you don't need a miracle. No, 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 no. You don't need a miracle. You know what y'all need? Y'all need a memory. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. I thank God for saving me. That same God 
who's kept this church open for a hundred years. Yeah. That same God yeah. that can die on a Friday yeah. but be raised on a Sunday. That same God yeah. when Lazarus was sick and Lazarus died he raised him. That same God you want to high five your neighbor and say that same God is operating in 2024 and whatever you are dealing with God can raise it whatever dead situations that you find yourself in God can raise it up did y'all get your Lazarus shout did you get your Lazarus shout somebody ought to thank God that we serve that same God with that same power and that same ability to take dead things and raise them up Now that we deal with Lazarus, there's something about Mary. Not my mother Mary, but the Mary in the text. There's something about Mary. Three piece, no biscuit, we gonna head out. Three points, slang, biscuit. Three points. This is a Baptist church. It was like, you got to have three points in the close and then strong. Take him to the cross and come on out. I think I kind of took you to the cross with Lazarus. You might skip that out, but three points. Baptist church. I've seen somebody do four points. Didn't go over so well. I got three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Here's the big idea for our message this morning, this afternoon. This examination of this text today is not about the ability to heal Lazarus. But what I want you all to get from this message, and I, and I pray and I hope that is the encouragement we all need as we move forward. Here, here's what I want you to get. I'm focusing not on God's ability to heal Lazarus. We know this and he proves it in the text. The examination of the text this afternoon is about what we do and how we are when we are waiting for the hand of God to move in our situation. Three points. Here are the three points to keep in mind when you find yourself dealing with delays and personal unmet expectations. Point number one, God waited because he loved them. Going back to the scripture in verse five, it says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. When he heard, therefore, that he was sick, what did God do? He waited two days still in the same place. I'm going to bring it back. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, Jesus heard. Jesus has a relationship with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. He loves them. It's stated in the text. So he's alive. He gets the word that he's sick. We know that he loves them. But Jesus' response was not to go there and heal him. Jesus' response was to, to wait. This text is very explicit in stating that he loved Lazarus and his sisters and that he stayed where he was knowing that Lazarus was sick and could die. They state that clearly in the text. There are so many people that have left our faith and that no longer believe in God because of unmet expectation and because specifically delays. And part of this is the lack of spiritual maturity we may find in these individuals that a blessing delayed is not a blessing denied. But we know that all things work together for good. I wish I had a Bible reader. To them that love God and who are called according to his I got Bible study, here we go. But we have to understand and accept that God still loves us regardless of where we find ourselves. So when dealing with delays and unmet expectations, continue to remind yourself that God loves you and his love is true. We used to say this 20 years ago. There isn't anything for you that the Lord wouldn't do. So the first thing, when you're dealing in your life with delays and unmet expectations, 
Continue to remind yourself that God still loves you. Second point, God's delay and God's timing will be used as a tool to strengthen our faith. There was never a question around God's ability to do what he has done. There will never be a frustration without the presence of expectation. There will never be frustration without the presence of expectation. How can you be mad at God for not healing your brother if there is not an expectation that he could heal your brother? I'm going to simplify it. I used to live in Georgia, now I live in California. So when I'm away and I come home, I have a personal expectation. My expectation when I arrive to the great city of Washington, D.C., is that my first meal will be fried chicken livers <laughs> and potato salad. Somebody say amen. The reason why I sometimes get frustrated is because sometimes it's not my first meal. Don't hit my mom up after service asking her, asking to make her use some chicken livers and potatoes out. We keep that in house. Macaroni and cheese, she can do. If you need a pan, holler. Cabbage, maybe. Chicken livers and potato salad, we keep that in the Stuart Benjamin household. Is that all right? But because they're so good, I have an expectation of how they should taste. And so my frustration is linked directly to my expectation. So when I, rec when I come into a delay or an unmet expectation, I then get frustrated. The same thing happens here because if they did not believe that God could heal Lazarus, then there wouldn't be frustration. And the reason why they were disappointed is because that they knew that he could heal Lazarus. They had faith in the known, and so I believe in an effort to strengthen their faith, God chose Lazarus to do the unknown. Because at this point in time in scripture, no one had been raised from the dead. Up until this point in the scripture, people had been healed. So God, from an expectation perspective is, I've seen him heal people, so I know he can heal my brother. I've never seen him raise a dead person. So I'm frustrated because the known of what God can do is not happening. And so with that being said, by Lazarus dying and then Lazarus being raised from the dead in this process, can you imagine the faith of those that witnessed this? Can you imagine the faith of Mary and Martha that have seen their brother not only get sick, and die but to be raised and so when we are dealing with our life situation i don't care how long you've been living but i believe that god in your life is still doing new things he said i come to do a new thing and so in your life you may say i've never seen this happen i've never seen this disease get cured i've never seen this marriage happen I've never seen a 60-year-old find a man this late in life. I've never said, I don't know how I'm going to recover. But do you know that God has the ability to take what you know and to flip it upside down and create in you an unknown in an effort to strengthen your faith? So when you're dealing with delays, unmet expectation, number one, you got to believe and know that God loves you second point God's delay and God's timing will be used as a tool to strengthen our faith last point I'm going to do a little Bible study here too now there are two things that Mary does in the text when she experiences delay and unmet expectation. First thing she does, and have your Bibles read, I'm gonna have you flip a little bit. She shares her disappointment with God's timing. Verse number 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, 
she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. So the first thing that Mary does is she shares her disappointment. The second thing she does, because there's something about Mary, she doesn't move. Verse 20. Then Martha, her sister, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. I'll bring it back. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. There's some of us today that's still sitting still in the house. Then Mary, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Verse 28. And when she had so said, she went her way, and this is Martha, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, the master is come and calleth for thee. Now Martha and Mary are together. It says it in the scripture because they are being comforted. And when Martha hears of Jesus coming, she goes to meet him, but Mary stays. Now, why is that important? This is important because there is a change in behavior. Martha hears of Jesus coming and moves. Mary does not move. Mary only moves when she hears that Jesus has arrived. So Martha moves in anticipation of Jesus coming. Mary moves when Jesus arrives. Martha moves before he has arrived. Mary moves once he arrives. Now, why is this significant? Because there is a change in behavior, and it almost appears like because Mary waited on God to show up, Mary wanted God to wait on her to show up. Now, the question, the question, the question, because the sermon today is about Mary, right? Right? Who is Mary? Who, who is Mary? Do we, do we have a clue of who Mary is? If you, if you read this passage of scripture and don't read nothing else, there is no way to establish that there's been a change in behavior, right? Mary's brother has died. Jesus delayed. He arrives and understandably, Mary doesn't want to go see Jesus yet. She sat still in the house. Now to me, I'm going to be honest with you. That sounds pretty logical, right? But the question I have is, how, how do you know, preacher? That's what Pastor Richard would say. How do you know, preacher, that the behavior has changed? The question I ask is, who is Mary? Verse number two. It was that Mary. <laughs> Somebody say that Mary. Which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. Turn to Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 38. Because then the question I have is okay, now that we understand who Mary is. Let's see how she operates in a different situation. So if you go to Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 38, this is where Mary is introduced. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman, this is Mary, from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Verse 38, then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. I'm going to go forward to the verse. Martha hears of Jesus coming. 
So she goes to meet him, but Mary stays. Back to Luke. When a certain immoral woman, say Mary, from that city heard he was eating there, she showed up. Before Lazarus died, any time or in this instance, when she, whenever she heard Jesus was somewhere, she would move. Lazarus is sick, has died, and is laid in a tomb. So now when Mary, that same Mary, hears that Jesus arrives, she no longer moves, she stays where she is. I'm going to do it one more time and I'm going to close up out of here. In Luke, when Mary heard about Jesus being somewhere, she moves to him, begins to wash his feet. She didn't see him, but she, she heard. Come on, church. We're going to close this out. Something has happened to Mary since that time where she's dealing with delay and unmet expectation. As a result of her delay and unmet expectation, now when she hears about Jesus, she no longer moves. In Luke, she heard and she showed up. But in John, he hear, she hears and stays where she is. In Luke, she heard and she showed up. But in John, she hears and she don't move. After a delay and an unmet expectation, she doesn't move until he arrives. And I want to encourage each and every one of you today to continue meeting Jesus and continue waiting and continue into anticipating the move of God because it's going to happen. As I close, I have an example of what it's like when you're dealing with delay, unmet expectation, and when we stop anticipating the move of God. But before I close, number one, when you're dealing with delay and unmet expectation, you have to remind yourself that God still loves you. Number two, God will use his timing as a way to strengthen our faith. And number three, when you run into delay and unmet expectation, it's so easy for us to no longer anticipate the move of God. I remember when our oldest son, Bo, was about two years old. And I remember my wife and I were hearing him cry in the room, and it wasn't a diaper change cry. It wasn't, I need a bottle cry. But there was something that was, that was bothering him, and we didn't know what it was. We, we, we gave him Tylenol. We did a whole lot of things until finally we decided to take him to the doctor. We take him to the doctor. The doctor goes through different questions. Is he eating? No, he doesn't really have an appetite. Is he, is he sleeping? No, no, he can't stay calm. Uh, how, how's his mood? He, he seems irritated. Seems like something is bothering him. So the doctor begins to examine him. Doctor pulls out a device and looks at his ears. His ears look fine. Doctor takes his temperature temperature is fine. The doctor then examines his belly. Belly feels fine. The doctor looks at his eyes. Eyes look fine. The doctor then says, open your mouth. Doctor goes in with a flashlight, starts examining his mouth. And she says, oh, I see what the issue is. Wasn't his ears. Wasn't his stomach. 
wasn't his eyes. There was something going on in his mouth. She said that your son is teething. So then I look into his mouth and I said, I don't see anything. And she said these words to me that I'll never forget. You can't see it yet, but it's about to come in. I don't know who I'm speaking to this afternoon, but some of y'all have lost some sleep. Some of y'all have been dealing with a loss of appetite. Some of y'all don't seem like yourself, have been dealing with loss, have been dealing with a lack of faith. And I stopped by on my way back to California to tell you and to tell your neighbor, you just teething, baby. Because what you are looking for is about to come in. If you're dealing with sickness, it's about to come in. If you're dealing with a broken heart, it's about to come in. If you're dealing with financial issues, it's about to come in. But we have to hold on to God's unchanging hands. And we have to remember that what we are going through is not because God doesn't love us. What we are going through is not because there's a lack of faith. What we are going through is not God being negligent of us. I have to just remind you that what you are looking for, it's about to come in. And I just want you to turn to your neighbor, to your left and to your right and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, you can't see it yet. But it's about to come in. Hope is about to come in. Healing is about to come in. Money's about to come in. Opportunity is about to come in. A mended heart is about to come in. Joy is about to come in. Mental health is about to come in. Peace is about to come in. And all you got to remind yourself when you're dealing with unmet expectations and when you're dealing with delays, you can't see it yet. But it's about to come in. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say oh yeah. Somebody say oh yeah. Say yeah. Won't he do it? Because it's about to come in. There's something about about Mary. God bless you all. Thank you so much. In God. Let us stand as we open up the doors of the church at this time. Will there be one on this, this Sunday? After hearing the man of God preach, giving us affirmation and confidence that even though you can't see it, it's coming. Just hold on. Knowing that God still loves you. That a delay is just a test of your faith. And even when you can't see it with the naked eye, just trust and believe in God that I know my change is coming. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And I wait until my change comes. Is there one today? Is there one today? Amen. If you saved the day and you showed up, know you're saved, why don't you just wave your hand in the air and wave it like you just don't care. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm saved. I'm sure enough saved. And I'm glad. I'm glad about it. That's a shout right there too, ain't it? I'm saved. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you don't do nothing else in this lifetime, you better know Jesus. <laughs> and you better know him for yourself. Not what my mama said, not what my daddy said, but you better know him for yourself. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, the Lord is good. Is there one? Is there one? Let's pick it up a little bit, Brother Payton. Is that all right? 
Come and go with me to my father's house. Whoa, to my father's house. To my father's house. Come and go with me to my There is Yes, it is. Come and go with me. Come and go. Come and go with me. Whoa, to my father's house. To my father's house. Come and go with me to my. There is joy. Peace and happiness there. Yes, it is. Peace and happiness there in my father. Whoa, in my father's. Yes, it is in my father. Peace and happiness there in my father's house. There is joy. One more time, come and go with me to my father's house. You may be seated. Go with me. Go to my to my father's house. To my father's house. There is joy. Joy, joy. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. Somebody say, show sure enough good. Good to my soul. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Let's give this man of God another hand. Amen, amen, amen. We, we thank God for him and we ask that you all continue to pray uh, for him. Uh, that God will continue to use him in a special uh, and mighty way. That he'll continue to declare the goodness of the Lord. And hopefully through his living in here, through his preaching, uh, that he'll draw somebody uh, closer to Christ. But that's what we're all charged to do. Amen, amen. It's not about what you say. But it's about how you live. Uh, let your light so shine uh, that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we ask that you all continue to pray for him. Pray for our pastor, uh, Pastor Nathaniel Benjamin. Please, please, please. If you haven't started praying, you need to pray now. Amen. And if you're already praying, I need you to pray just a little bit more. Amen. Be a little more consistent. Uh, with your prayers. Amen. And y'all pray for my mama. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank, thank God for you for all of your prayers and we just are honored to be here today. Thank y'all for letting the Stewart family hijack y'all service today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I promise we'll leave everything in order when we leave. Is that all right? And y'all invite us back again another time. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Let us give God a shout. Come on, we can do better now. Let's give God a shout. Are you proud? Are you proud? Something about Mary. You know, when I heard the title, I thought he was going to go with the movie, Ben Stiller, uh, something about Murray. But thank God he went the other direction. Come on, somebody. We thank God for this young man. I tell you, I'm, I, I, was, I was captivated while he was preaching. And I just thought about Pastor Wim. Pastor Wim loved preachers. And he would have loved his preaching today if he was here. So we thank God for the fruit that was produced out of this church. We should be proud. 
Because guess what? We got a son who's going to become the president of one of our conventions. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. In the person of Damon Bridge. Come on, somebody. Y'all better get excited. Look how God is using the fruit of the Second New St. Paul Baptist Church. One of our sons was the president of the Minister's Conference. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to shout. Look how God is moving. And he sent him all the way to California. Come on, somebody. And he came to bless our soul. Somebody need to give God a shout. I don't know about you. I'm so excited. Man, we ask that you would continue to keep the Stewart family in prayer. Especially Sister Benjamin as she takes care of our pastor. I thank God for the good job that she is doing. I'm hoping that I can get some taste of her food. I keep hearing about she can cook. I got, I got to taste some of that food, boy. And I love food. Come on, somebody. But we thank God of all you. Continue to keep this church in prayer. Continue to keep our pastor in prayer. And continue to keep this young man in prayer. He's a man. And you know one thing? You can tell one thing. He loved his family. He talked about them boys and his wife. I mean, he talks about them. He ain't gonna, he's not ashamed to let you know he's a married man and got two children. Come on, somebody. And we need young men to continue to do that. Keep in mind, keep focus on this election. I thank God for Sister Parker reminding us what we need to keep our eyes on. Y'all give her a hand because we need people to inform us. Because there's so many misinforming out here than anything else. And we thank God for that. We're going to give Sister Benjamin a, a chance to say something about her son. Because I know she's proud. Look at it. She, she grinning from ear to ear. Come on, somebody. And, and she need to be proud. She has the right to be proud. Because she took care of her kids and she loved her boys. And she loved her grandbabies too, boy. She talked about them grandbabies. I said, Sister Benjamin, you're a proud grandmother. Come on, somebody. So at this time, we're going to give her a chance to say something. And after she says something, then we're going to bring the preacher of the hour to come back and give us the benediction. Keep yourself in prayer and keep each other in prayer. That God will continue to bless Second New St. Paul Baptist Church. Thank you all again so much for, for having me. Um, it's been a good time. Hopefully you all got something from the message that you can apply to your everyday life. Um, yes, very, <laughs> very grateful for uh, this church and just all that 
it's provided to our family in terms of support and teaching and love and encouragement. Um, yeah, just just thankful for, for you all. Um, it's 12.30.40? Okay, we're doing pretty good on time. I guess I'll have everyone stand up for our benediction. I haven't done one of these in a while, so we're going <laughs> to... Let's see if I remember it from my upbringing here. We'll close in a word of prayer and go into our benediction, all right? All right, Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you, Lord, for what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen, what our hearts have felt. God, we ask that you continue to allow this word to move forward throughout our week, throughout this month, oh God. Allow it to uh, be fresh fruit for our bodies to enjoy, for our minds and our spirits to grow from. Now, God, we ask that you would just keep our people, bless our people, continue to walk with our people, continue to cover us, Lord, and continue to guide us every step of the way. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, love him, God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let everybody say, let everybody say, Everybody say Amen. 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 Everybody say Amen. Everybody say yeah. Everybody say yeah. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Have a great week. Thank you so much.